So, well, hi there. Now I've connected my buffer stage to my switched in VFO mode oscillator again. And I'm going to demonstrate to you that I can use my buffer stage as modulator. And for that, I've hooked up the resistor to externally adjust the bias for the right setup. And also, here I'm going to connect my audio source via the 10K resistor. And I'm connecting my audio source from here. To here, and this is my preamplifier, or this is my audio source output, and I'm connecting it with a cable. And here's a 10k resistor. Okay, I've already set it up, and we are transmitting on 5 megahertz in VFO mode. That means I can adjust the frequency however I want. So now we are transmitting on 5 megahertz, and let's start the music. It's a little bit too loud, but as you can hear. We're having a good AM signal. So I'm proving it that I'm transmitting with VFO. So I'm now changing the frequency to here. Good. Frequency has been changed. And what is important here is the working point from our second transistor. I'm now demonstrating that. So this is the working point not set up correctly. As you can hear, there is no modulation at all. But now I'm going to set the working point just right. This is too much working, uh, too, too less current, and this is the right current. Wait. See? How better here? And now we can set our VFO back again, with, along with the tuning capacitor, for example. Okay, and here it is. Another thing I'll show you is about the linearity of the amplifiers. So now I've got my amplifier, or better my buffer amplifier hooked up as a modulate as a modulator. And now I'm going to demonstrate you something else that is the linearity of an amplifier. Now I'm modulating my oscillator again in bass. And also I hook up my uh, crystal again, crystal controlled oscillator. So then I have to reset the bias. Okay, it's, uh, it's not working because the bias is not set right. Okay. Now the bias is set right. Let's make it a little bit louder. Okay, now the bias is set right. So we are getting out here our already modulated signal from our one transistor transmitter. The already modulated signal goes into here, into this buffer amplifier, and gets out here amplified. But now let's have a look. I changed the capacitor from 4.7 to 100 picofarad. That means the buffer gets more power. If you can, can hear it, there's already a little bit of distortion. And now I'm going to hook up the other amplifier as well. And you will notice a big difference. Okay, now I'm going to hook it up. Okay, where's the modulation? Now I've hooked up my other amplifier. And the signal got really well amplified. But where's the modulation? That is what is called a linear amplifier, or if the amplifier needs to be linear. In my first case, which I'm going to demonstrate now, I'm connecting the antenna back again. So the antenna is now connected here. Now I'm connecting the antenna here. The modulation disappeared. The reason of that is because the first amplifier here gets low power and is able to amplify the RF part and the and the music together. And the second amplifier gets the strong signal from here and overloads a little bit. So it will still amplify the RF signal, but it won't amplify the RF signal and the modulation together. 
So you can build a linear amplifier. That means that you can build an amplifier that does amplify your music and your RF signal together, but it's very inefficient. It requires much power that is uh, not available for RF amplification, or you can a little bit overload your amplifier to get um, just the RF signal being amplified, but therefore you get a much wider range of amplification. And the amplification defines is defined by these two resistors. If these resistors are getting bigger, the gain will get bigger. But if they are getting lower, you will get more power output, but therefore less gain. So this is the basic schematic. And here's my audio amplifier, as you can see. It's just the same like this, just with different resistors to get much gain. Here's the input capacitor and the output capacitors. The bigger this capacitor here is, that connects the audio output to your audio input, the more bass you will get and the louder the signal will be. The smaller it is, the less bass you will get, but therefore the more treble you get. Smaller capacitor, more treble, bigger capacitor, less treble. And here you usually add an electrolytic capacitor and electrolytic capacitor um, parallel to the power supply just to stabilize the whole circuit. And here are my input resistors. You can lay these audio channels left and right together and they connect to the audio amplifier. If you add a resistor and a capacitor together, the resistor, the higher the resistor is, the more bass you will have. Okay, that was my other video about amplifiers in a transmitter. And we were talking about an AM transmitter. If you're using an F, a FM transmitter, it doesn't matter if this is linear or if this is not linear, because the frequency is already modulated by the oscillator, and these two stages don't need to be uh, linear. But for, for an AM transmitter, they need to be linear if you want the modulation be amplified as well. And if you just want the signal to be amplified, which we will do later, we will just amplify the signal, you don't need a linear amplifier like this one. Well, this one is also linear, but the signal that come, goes into this amplifier is simply too strong to be amplified linear. Okay, in the next video I'm going to show you harmonics and our final amplifier.